There's our theme that we've been going through. Probably cut out. Okay. There's our theme that we've been going through in this Lenten season. Keep that in mind as we get started here. What I am going to tell you um, may, may be shocking news to you. People tend to listen to things that they like to hear. And not so much to things that they don't like to hear. And sometimes also need to hear. You surprised? So, what happens when a person tells us something that we don't want to hear? Well, one example in a, a, a group setting that has been given a, a name more recently is called No Platforming. Maybe you've seen this, maybe you've seen news clips, places like college campuses, places like political, um, political speeches, where a crowd starts to shout over the given speaker so that people can't, can't hear them. Or, or maybe it's that they, they don't even give the person a chance to get to, to the stage. Now there's, there's debate about when there is a valid time to enact no platforming, but, but I don't want to go there. What I want to take up are the, the clear-cut examples where something that needs to be heard is not what a, a person wants to hear, and so the person, in essence, no platforms the messenger that's bringing that news. And I'm not bringing this up so that we can kind of pick out with a fine detail what what other people have done wrong. What I'm, I'm doing is moving from the, the wider crowd context to the individual perspective, and each of us should be looking right here to ourselves. If someone makes a point that challenges you to consider if what you have thought, what you have said, what you have done is wrong, how do you feel? And what is your response? Well, the how I feel part is easy. I love it, right? No? No, of course not. Does anyone like to hear that what they have done is wrong? No one likes to hear that, that they ought to, that they've done something wrong, that they, they need to, to change something. So what is the danger then? To refuse to, to even listen and evaluate if what the person is saying to me is, is correct. And the temptation is to shout down or in some way, in some fashion, shut down any listening to what the person has to say. If we try to capture that visually, here you go. You've seen it, haven't you? The memes are all over the place. For this, right? Not listening. What, what do you, what do you call that? Click one more. What do you call that when, when a child acts that way? Maybe toward a parent. What do you call that? Insubordination. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Tantrum. <laughs> yeah. Childish. And yet, you of course know that there are times when a child needs to hear something that they, they don't want to hear, but they don't like it because it's not what they want to hear. What does the parent do? When it's something that's especially about the child's safety and well-being, the parent, the parent should not give. There are times that people need to hear something that they don't want to hear. Is this true also for you, dear child of God? Is this also true for each one of us in our Christian walk of faith? There's definitely a pattern for us to pick up on here. There is something for us to always be on guard against because there is inside of you and me a part of each one of us 
that doesn't want to hear anything that it doesn't like to hear, or that doesn't fit with what we have done. This wanting to hear only what we want to hear. Go ahead, go to our next slide. So this is the, the temptation that we're talking about fighting today. When did this phenomena come to such ferocity and, and such prominence? This isn't something new, is it, right? Has it been around for two decades? Two centuries? Actually, the, the evidence that we are taking a look at today from Jeremiah chapter 26 goes back to over two millennia, right? So we are at a little over 2,600 years ago at a time a little past 600 years B.C. And you're in Judah's history, the southern part of the, the nation of Israel, to whom Jeremiah was a prophet, a spokesman of God's word. Note the reaction. Go ahead. <clears throat> Click for us. There, there were our verses right at the beginning. When Jeremiah had finished saying everything the Lord had commanded him to say to all the people, then, you remember the reaction? Right, look, he finished. The immediate response was a verdict. And if they had gotten their way, they would never have to listen to Jeremiah again because they said, he must die. Where, where did that come from? Was it a reaction from sheer pride? Was it a, a reaction from their, their thoughts being merely on otherworldly? Things the people clearly wanted only to hear about prosperity, about life being easy and full of stability and peace. They didn't want to hear anything about the Lord's message of their country being invaded and their nation being conquered and the people that survived being carried off into captivity. And all of that ties to another truth that they, they didn't want to hear from the Lord. The Lord's judgment about their sin. But Jeremiah, you know what he did? He didn't change. He didn't change his message to fit with what they wanted to hear. Here's the close of what we heard from Jeremiah, right? His very final statement. It is true that the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing. There it is. Now we are staring at the principle. At, we are face to face with this important truth for us, for every day of our life. We're told this is true for us as well throughout the Bible. Every word that God brings to you and me right here is is God's word for us and it is true and when he tells us that something that we have thought something that we have said something that we have done is wrong it might be hard to hear but it is needed to hear our Lord says You've gotten angry and, and you've hated on people. And, and that's breaking of my will, my will to not murder. You've taken part in gossip, and that's not simply some harmless conversation that actually has, has hurt other people. If you've looked lustfully at someone, whether it's in person and they're right there in front of you, or it's some image on a screen these days, it's still... It's still an offense against me, God says. It's adultery in your heart. These things really are sin. They really do hurt people. They really do impact relationships. And they really are offenses against our God. Our sins deserve for us a sentence of hell. The Lord calls us to repentance. To get rid of abandoned pride. To leave behind denial, the only answer to our sin is to recognize we are hopelessly lost, we cannot fix this, and to then trust Jesus. 
Jesus, you are the way to be right with God. You are my Savior. That's exactly what he did, right? He saves. He did everything to save us. Jesus, perfect lifetime of listening to all of God's word and truth. That counts for your life. Jesus, life full of trust, trust in the Father all his life long, it counts as your trust. Jesus' entire lifetime counts as a perfect life for you and me. And his willingness to take the suffering of hell means that you never have to experience suffering hell. That's the assurance for everyone whose trust is in him. His life and his death in our place. Go ahead and click for us. So there's that 316 reference again. I thought it was fitting along with our, our emblem for fighting temptation. With this message in view, knowing this love of our God, our heart has been changed. Now, the new you, the new self that God has created in us, the, the faith in us, desires to hear everything that God tells us is true and to fight temptation. So what applications do you carry away from you today from this section of Jeremiah that we're taking a look at? Well, there's three that stand out to me. First, expect that your gut reaction to, to things that you don't want to hear is going to in many times be that I'm going to try to deny it. I'm going to try to, to cut it off. Why is that? Because there is still that part of each one of us that still clings to us, the, the sinful flesh. And, and God makes clear how hostile the sinful flesh is towards every truth of God. It doesn't want to hear any of it. it it's volatile toward, towards all of it. So, when we have a gut reaction to simply, out of hand, dismiss something that has questioned what we have done, called it wrong, is it wise for us to give in to that gut reaction? No, take a step back and pause in humility and consider what's, what's been shared. And if it is, in fact, truth, which God knows that, that we need to hear, then treasure it. And then here's a connected step. Turn the no platforming, flip it onto the sinful flesh, right? Go back to that parent-child relationship. And the child comes with an excuse or with an objection. And the parent can do this. They can say, no, 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 I'm not even going to listen to that. Stop right there. That's not true. Stop right there. That's not good. In the battle between the new self that knows God's truth and loves God's truth and the, the sinful flesh, constantly be engaged in this activity of no platforming the objections to God's truth that come from our sinful flesh. Second application. Be ready when what, be ready for what you should expect when you're the one who's carrying God's truth to somebody else. If you're carrying God's truth to somebody else and it's a part of God's truth that they don't want to hear because they don't like to hear it, maybe it's something that they've done wrong that God's word indicates. You think they're going to always reply, Oh, happy, happy me, I'm glad you're telling me that. <laughs> Sometimes they may, they may object, they may get angry, they may try to, to cut off hearing anything that you have to, to say. Does that mean you just simply go on and always talk about the things that they like to hear? That's not healthy in our, in our relationships, in our families, in our homes, in our church family. Let's do this. Let's help each other, right? Let's be accountable to each other. But let's work together for this goal that we have to no platform our sinful flesh. To, to when objections start to come up, to, to direct each other to, no, 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 don't give, don't give a place for that. Instead, listen to God's word. It's always true. And then taking this application to another arena, um, what should you expect when you go into the world? 
or when we collectively go into the world with the message of Jesus as our Savior. If there's, gonna, if there's opposition, it's nothing new, right? What did Jeremiah face? Remember our gospel lesson? What did Jesus himself face? And yet they patiently continued to share the truth of God that people, that we all need to hear. The message of our sin and a need to come clean before God. And the message of a Savior and healing and peace in Jesus. And that leads us to a final application, a third one, to keep in view, I think, walking away from this. Keep in constant view your heavenly home. We heard reference to that in our Philippians Bible lesson. Our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, our Lord Jesus Christ. We've got an eternity under the perfect refuge of our Savior's arms to enjoy. And, and how, how did we receive this gift? God sent somebody to share this news that we needed to hear. He sent somebody to, send, to share that message with, with us. And to then bring us to confess our sins and to, and to put our trust in Him to save. So, though there will be a constant battle against our, our gut reactions to, to deny anything that says that, that we've done wrong, though there will be a constant opposition that we face as we carry and hold on to God's truth in a world that does not know His truth, may a sight of, of your eternal home continue to encourage you to treasure and hold His word and rejoice in it. Amen.